Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brand for Kia, and welcome to our live video series. And, all oh, right, some of our regulars are saying you missed me yesterday. I appreciate that. All right, today we're going to talk about the Kia Soul. And the reason we're going to talk about that is twofold. First of all, a lot of people really like the Kia Seltos, but I'm going to argue that the Kia Soul has a lot of those features for less. So if you want a Seltos, that's great. We'll sell you one. But some people say, hey, man, I just want a little bit better deal on that Seltos. Well, Welcome to the Kia Soul. So we're going to talk about that, what's better, what may not be better. Uh, we're going to compare these two. And the other reason, the second part of this video, is because these are our last two 2020 Kia Souls, and they're actually kind of interesting models. They are identical models, but one is the GT line. So we're going to look at the differences between the 2020 GT line and the regular. We're going to talk about some of the differences that will happen in 2020, or sorry, excuse me, 2021. And all of that's going to come up at the three-minute mark of this video. So if you're watching and you're not live with us, feel free to... Uh, uh, join us live. Let me show you how to do that. But if, yes, excuse me, if you're watching and you're not live, skip ahead to the three minute mark if you'd like, and that'll be where we really get going. My regulars are reminding me already to remember the keys, and I'm getting better at just leaving them in the car because it just seems better. All right, let me show you how to join us if you want to join us live as well. You just go to our YouTube page. You're probably already there right now. You search for Brand for Kia. Any YouTube page, just search for Brand for Kia. We look sort of like this. If you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock, which is what we're doing right now, sometimes you get lucky. And you see the live now video right there on the home page. If you don't see it on the home page, just click this videos tab right there and you will see a live now right there. So you could have clicked the live now on the first page if you saw it. Ooh, we're gonna watch an ad, plant-based Vega. Ooh, sounds super interesting. We're gonna skip this ad. Oh no, we can't skip the ad. So there you go, guys. They're getting double pay here. All right, can we skip the ad yet? Oh, we still can't. Just so you know, I think I made a quarter of a penny right now. Or the company did anyways. All right, there we go. Let's go uh, this. I'm going to blow this up a little bit because I've got this on the big screen. I can see some of you guys. All right. Okay, so yes, yesterday I wasn't here. I just, uh, actually had to go to a funeral. So a bit of a sad day, but a good day. Okay, here we go. Two and a half minutes in, 210. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got. Uh, do we have any breaking news? K5 information. Got a little bit of promotional information. We know that residual values are going to be higher than... Honda Accord, they're going to be higher than Toyota Camry, uh, so really good residual values, really good lease values on that car. Uh, somebody asked me today, can they place an order for the 2021 Sorento? And yes, you can. Uh, give us a call. We'll help you walk through that process. Uh, we're pretty familiar with doing that. We've been doing that with EVs for quite a while, placing orders before the vehicles come in. Uh, so there's a process, and you want to deal with someone who's experienced in doing that, so give us a call, 509-304-6542. Uh, uh, so those are those two vehicles. I'm expecting the K5 to show up soon. If you are interested in the K5, just subscribe to the channel. That's going to make it way easier for you. It's going to make it easier for us. Nobody's going to have more content on that car, especially the Canadian model. So some interesting things going on there. Um, anyways, it's three minutes in. So we're going to start with these two vehicles that we have here. So again, the reason we're doing this is twofold. Uh, a lot of people say I really like the Kia Seltos, um, but this is actually a cheaper way to get a lot of the features in the Seltos. And we're going to talk about some of the differences, some of the similarities between a Seltos and a Soul. Uh, I happen to drive a Kia Soul, and uh, mine happens to be electric, so it's a little bit different. But some of the features are identical, and some of the features that I like about these cars are in my car as well. Uh, so I'm a big fan of these cars. I'm also a huge fan of the Seltos. So, again, same thing either way. Uh, these two happen to be our last two 2020 models in inventory. So uh, 2021, there are some changes to some of the vehicles, some changes less so. Uh, I think in the States, you guys are getting more changes than we had here. Um, but again, we have an electric Kia Soul. You guys aren't getting that. So our Soul lineups are a little bit different. You guys have a Turbo Soul. We do not. Uh, these two cars here are identical. They are EX Premium with one exception. When I say identical, they're not quite. One is a GT line EX Premium, and one is not. Now, for 2020, you're not going to be able to get this trim line, this EX Premium GT line. So that is the black car of the GT line. Uh, we had it in here recently, uh, the black car, not too long ago. But we're going to compare it to this car so you can see some of the differences. Um, there will be a GT line package coming out for 2021, but it's only on the limited model, and it will not have roof rails. So we'll talk about that in a second. The roof line will look exactly like this one. There's some differences in it. I've seen the car myself, uh, but didn't get a chance to do a video of it. So we'll talk about that for 2021. Uh, and I want to show you some of the differences here. And uh, what else was I going to say? There was something else I was going to say that was super, super important. I do not remember. So we'll get back to that. All right, let's just quickly check out the price point of these cars. Uh, now, first of all, price point is a little different on these because they're at 0% for 84 months. And you get a um, $500 credit as well. So there's a bunch of deals to be had, whether you, um, 
you know, whether you want a cash deal or financing. I always talk about financing on this part, but you can always talk with our team about uh, cash deal. Anyways, here's where we are in the lineup. You can see the EX. Let's just start, start at the beginning here. The Kia Soul starts with the LX. Pretty rare. Don't see them very often. EX is very common. EX Plus is a really nice car. EX Premium is what we have in front of us today and the G EX Premium GT line. You can see the price difference about, what is that, 600 bucks ish give or take. Um, so that's the price difference between these two. What do you add? Pretty much it's all listed right here. You have sport bumpers and side sill accents, roof rails, and the D-cut sport steering wheel. Now, that's basically the difference between the two. We're going to talk about what that means. So let's take a look real quick at the outside. So what we're going to do, we're going to spend a half an hour here. Um, anything, if this video is over half an hour, we've probably gone off topic after the 30-minute mark. So at the 30-minute mark, we're going to probably... Stay on topic with these. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at these cars. We're going to compare them. We're going to look at the differences on the outside. We're going to spend time checking out the cargo space. I'm going to sit in them. You're going to see headroom with me in them. So we can compare real world headroom as opposed to just the specs. Uh, we're going to look at some of the styling differences. We're going to look at the technology in these cars. And uh, we can take your questions the whole way through. Uh, so that's going to take probably the next 24 minutes or so. So uh, buckle up, get a snack, get a drink. And here we go. Soul is fun to drive, a nice instrument cluster, and great center screen. That's what Mike says. Yeah, he's absolutely right. So really, the soul that I would like to get is probably this trim line. Um, same wheel pattern. Yeah, basically the same car. So this is where we talk about this EX premium line. Same wheel pattern, same design. So let's start here uh, real quick, and we'll take a look at just the EX premium. Now, you can see the wheel there. It's got the red center cap there. Uh, I don't know if you see that. So uh, interesting, only the GT lines have red center caps, except for this sole. Uh, this one happens to be red in color. If you look down at the bottom here though, it's just a black plastic. That's a matte plastic. It's not a painted plastic, just like the front here in the grill. Come along the front in the grill here, and you see sort of a nice checked pattern there. You've got uh, just like individual, almost not mirrored finish, but a little bit more of a metallic type finish on the front of those little pops uh, there. One real quick thing, I was gonna try to clean these cars. Had a fairly busy day by not being here yesterday and I didn't get a chance to clean them up. So I do apologize for that, bear with me. GT line, you can see already the differences here. Instead of having those sort of dot checkpoints, you have sort of these Y shape uh, points in the front here. You still have this sort of um, chrome looking, dark chrome looking piece around there. The um, other car has as well. Now you'll notice the regular EX Premium the grill goes all the way around. It forms a circle. You can see it down the side. Coming down over here, you don't have that chrome on the side. You have a little different look. A lot of us have really been a big fan of this GT line. We just Sometimes we didn't realize what made it look sharper, and it's just a little bit of detailing in there. Same headlights in both these, same headlights, fog lights, signal lights. We're going to look at them closer to the end of the video. Uh, but just a little bit different bumper out front there. And then at the side here, maybe I should go between the cars. Let's go back between the cars for a second so I can look at both. You can see the difference here. Now, the black car, it would be nice if it wasn't painted black. I parked them a little bit not parallel so we could do this exact view. Right here, below, below that red line, that is painted black on this car. So it has that nice, clean look all the way through. Whereas on this sole, it's a matte black, just like this bumper right here. So a little bit difference. The GT line has the red accent line in the front and the side there. And we're going to show you the back while we're at it here. We'll start with the red one. This is the EX Premium. Traditional sole bumper here, come on camera. You can see that sort of matte black finish, that silver trim down low. Um, no real diffuser, just kind of a skid plate looking uh, silver panel there. And uh, so take a quick look at that. You'll see in a second what's different here as we go to this black car, fully painted area here. Um, now this is, yeah, that's painted, yep. So the diffuser is painted down there. You've got this little, uh, I don't know if I can show it great on camera because black is almost impossible to see. But a little bit of a vent style uh, coming out of there. The, um, the uh, reflectors there are a little bit different, but you have that more sporty look. So when we talk about the Kia Seltos compared to these cars, these ones have a little bit more of an on-road sportiness. The regular one has a little bit more, you know, traditional look, same as the Seltos, but you have that painted bumper look here on this particular GT line model, which is pretty cool. Uh, real quick. If we're going to talk Seltos, same engine, same transmission in Seltos and these cars. Now, in Canada, we can't get a turbo engine in the Soul. You can get a turbo engine in the Seltos. So that's going to pop you up a little bit different price point. Um, but yeah, just so we know that's where we're at. Every Kia Seltos has roof rails. Only the 2020 GT line Soul has roof rails. So you've got these roof rails up top. In 2021, a GT line 
will not have roof rails. The soul will no longer come with roof rails in 2021 in Canada. So uh, again, when we talk about uh, soul and uh, and uh, Seltos, that's one difference. I think I remember what I was going to say off the beginning. Uh, the Seltos, we did a video a little while back with saying that we've always wanted a Kia Soul all-wheel drive. And what we ended up with was a Seltos. And I think that was the right decision. That being said, by having a car like this without all-wheel drive, you do save a little bit of money for certain levels of features. So let's talk about those features right now. Let's hop in the driver's seat and we'll start right there. These cars are identical inside um, in features, but you're going to see some differences uh, in, the, in the looks. Actually, we'll start here and then we'll move to the black car to actually dive in. Take a look at the seats here. Gray stitching. Gray seats, uh, perfectly comfortable. You still have a nice, cool little uh, sole thing here. Hey, Connor's back, he says. Still have sole written in the side of the seat there, um, but a sharp-looking seat, I think. Fairly sporty-looking, but uh, round steering wheel. And take a look at the gear shift over here. Just black stitching. Perfectly nice, perfectly really good car. Now, memorize all of that as we walk over here, and you're going to see the difference in the GT line right off the bat. Red stitching. So you can see red stitching. It looks like a little bit taller bolster to me. It may be just an optical illusion, um, but a little bit different bolstering sports style seats. Same type of thing, or I don't know if the bolster is different. Red stitching throughout now. So when you go down on the gear shift here, same gear shift, but red stitching. Red stitching on the steering wheel, and you can see that's a flat bottom D-cut steering wheel. So that is the GT line. That red stitching, a little bit different uh, fabric here, uh, a little bit sportier maybe fabric there as well. Everything else is going to be identical between these cars because they are the same thing. So let's jump in here and talk about what everything else is. All right, real quick, I'm going to show you what the key looks like. Here is what the key looks like. They moved to this more modern key. So we've mentioned in the past, I mentioned this all the time. Some people found that the buttons on the side here could get accidentally pressed. I never really had an issue with that, but some people did. These ones I've never heard anybody say anything bad about. No accidental pressing, um, easy to operate. Most of the time you can just keep it in your pocket. You don't even have to pull it out of your pocket because uh, it is a push button start car. And that means you don't have to touch it for anything. So speaking of push button start, Seltos would have it right up over here on the sole. To me, this is a much more logical space to put a start button. And let me show you why. You hit start, I'm gonna happen to hit it twice and you put it in gear. That's what you need to do with your hands. Instead of reaching it behind the wheel and coming over here, it's just more logical spot to have it in the exact same spot as the gear shift. All right, we're going to take a look at here. Inside, we talked about Celtos and Stoll. They're identical. Literally not a whole lot of difference in here at uh, certain trim levels. Depends on what uh, trim level you get to. But, um, yeah, left side tack, right side speedometer, lots of information in the center. Uh, a lot of information, navigation information in there, tire pressure monitors, uh, lane keep assist, which is in this car as well. which means the car can steer itself, keep it centered in the lane, uh, driver attention warning. So good stuff. Tire pressure monitors is individual tires as well. So they're, each tire is labeled with the exact PSI. Um, that's kind of handy. And you can see here just uh, lots of information here uh, in there. Do engine sizes vary between trim packages? Not in Canada. We have the same engine, same transmission. And that same engine and same transmission is used in the Kia Forte, most Kia Fortes, uh, all Kia Souls, and most Kia Seltos. Same engine, same transmission. So you're really looking about which body style do you want, which features do you want, which price point do you want. If you want all-wheel drive, you're going to move to the Seltos. Uh, if you don't need all-wheel drive, you start getting into a whole bunch of options and stuff. Uh, from the Forte 5, which is a hatchback, you get the uh, Soul, which is a hatchback. The, of course, the Seltos is a hatchback SUV. Uh, so lots of options there. Uh, one thing people like, the very first car, other than the Telluride, to get this big 10 and a quarter inch screen is the Kia Soul. So this is in this trim level here. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this uh, screen here. Now, interestingly, on the Seltos, you have an extra little dot up here. What that does is it allows you to change the setup of anything in here, uh, or almost everything in here, per driver. So you can set driver one and driver two, and you can have, if you want your maps in different spots, if you want different... Uh, widgets here you can do all that kind of stuff your radio presets those kinds of things so you can set that all up driver one and driver two you can do that in the seltos you can't do it in any of our other cars actually the nero phev still has it not the nero uh regular high-end one but uh plug-in hybrid electric nero has that as well now uh maybe the nero ev i'm not sure but just the seltos in this sort of class and group of cars so still great software here a couple cool things here you have sound and mood lamps uh let's just see if we can get them on film for you it's this is better in the soul than it is in the um in the Seltos. So we've got full volume. All right, it's full brightness. It's on red. Let's see if we can see. The camera can see it. I can't see it with my own eyes right now, but when it's dark, you can see that 
gray panel has red all throughout. And uh, there's also red that can shine down or other colors that can shine down here. And then there's red over here as well. So you can see that a little easier. Now let me just have some fun with it. We're going to go to themes instead. All right. You can see down here because I have a wet or a white uh, panel down there. See how it's changing colors there? We have it on party time is what it's called. And you can see party time is going to cycle through those purpley type colors. Check it out over here. Three different colors at the same time. You can sort of see it changing in there. Uh, pretty cool the way that can change. So just something cool. The Seltos does not have this. And again, same thing up here. Looks pretty cool at night. And you're not limited to just, for instance, party time. You can do, hey, yo. I mean, okay, I'm not going to sing. You can do traveling. You can do romance, which is so nice. Let's look at romance for a second. The point is you can change it to a lot of colors. It's kind of a cool feature. It's unique to the soul. Um, and especially when you're driving at night, uh, you can really see it clearly. It's a little harder to see in the bright lights that I'm working in under here right now. Uh, why is a soul a cube shape? We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so anyways, you can change it to Midnight City. Pretty cool. Just different colors that it changes through. And again, the glow theme is just one color only. If I can get it uh, with the right hand here. What am I doing? Oh, it's mad at me. Anyways, the point is you can also set up to your music. Uh, lots of stuff to show there. Anyways, we'll leave it where it is for now. Android Auto Apple CarPlay on this screen is amazing. It goes full screen. It's really pretty um, easy to use, especially with uh, Apple CarPlay just updated with new wallpapers that you can put it behind. So that changes the feel of the car as well. Pretty cool. And you can see there's lots of settings and lots of things you can change in here. And this is as responsive as an iPad. So between the Seltos and Soul, which model has the taller ride height from your experience? Uh, so you're talking driver's seat height or ground clearance. Seltos has more ground clearance. It would have a slightly taller ride height as well. That being said, the seats in both cars can be moved quite a bit uh, up and down. So the sole can be very tall, a very tall car. So I can show you that in a minute. We'll, we'll go to the headroom in a second on that. Uh, scrolling down here, one thing the Seltos does not have is a dual zone climate control system. And I am a huge fan of these. My wife and I tend to uh, battle over heat and temperature and my electric vehicle, Kia Soul, does not have dual zone temperature. So pretty cool uh, temperature zone thing there. Now, in 2020, again, these last two cars are 2020. You have this feature right here. Uh, it's not going to turn on because the car is not on. That's okay. That feature is a little tungsten element in the windshield. And I'm going to see if I can film it for you here. If I can get my hand right. Uh, sometimes you can see it, but maybe not. Come on, camera. Nope. I don't know. You can't see it. Anyways, there's a little tungsten element through the whole windshield and i'm talking like the whole windshield up down uh, it's a little bit of squiggly lines when you use that feature it will defrost de-ice your entire windshield it's the best feature ever we're gonna have it on the k5 they took it away from the kia soul in 2021 i have it on my soul ev i love it uh it's not on every soul but these cars have it and it's amazing you don't have to scrape the ice off your windshield you don't have to do all that so really cool feature it's on this it's not on the seltos as well Moving down here, wireless phone charging pad. Nice, big, fits any size, large phone. Um, let me uh, scroll through here. So you've got a huge uh, charge pad there. It fits the largest of phones. And again, two uh, uh, USB ports here and a 12-volt port. Very similar to the Seltos as well. Uh, transmission looks identical to the Seltos, and that's because it is. Works the same way as well. You can shift it into manual mode from there. Drive modes in the Seltos are a little more advanced. In the Soul, it's one of the few cars we have with only two. Now... I'm going to make the argument you only really need to, normal and sport. The catch I would make is it should be smart and sport. Uh, normal is a normal drive mode on this car, works fine. But normally uh, in the Seltos and the Forte, other cars, we have a smart mode, which works as an eco mode. It gives you great fuel efficiency, but also kicks into the sport on its own. Uh, normal mode is fine, works great. Sport mode is fairly aggressive. You're going to drive a normal in this car most of the time. But it does really... Uh, pump up the 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 torque early on in that and the touchy gas pedal as well so again normal and sport are your only two drive modes you get three in the seltos spark normal smart and sport uh, i think it should just be smart and sport if you're just going to have two but there we go uh okay so connor and you guys are talking about electric cars we will happily talk about electric cars i just did 250 kilometers on mine yesterday uh, and my car is rated for 250 kilometers, so we'll talk about that experience. We'll do that after, though, in about 10 minutes' time. Uh, moving through here, power heated seats, two levels in the soul. Interestingly, you have three levels in um, uh, most of our other cars and three levels in the very top-line soul, two levels in every other one. Again, I'd argue you might not need more than two, uh, so that's okay, but uh, just something different there as well. 
And we're going to scroll through again to show you the seats and everything else. Um, we've shown that already. We're going to scroll up to the top. And you have a sunroof as well. Now, in this price point of the Kia Seltos, you do have an artificial leather. You have, um, let me just show you these ones. These ones, of course, are cloth leather. The Seltos has an artificial leather, um, which allows you to have that leather type feel. Uh, it's quite nice. I, I don't love leather, but I quite like that um, artificial leather. And these ones at this price point come in cloth. So that's just something to keep in mind. But you do have the sunroof as well. All right, we're going to show you the trunk here real quick. A couple little tricks with the sole that are, I think are a good idea. Uh, you can see the seats folded down. I did that for a reason. Pull those mats out of here. All right, so when, so this trunk floor, it lowers. Why would it lower? Why do you care? Why do you need that? Well, first of all, when it's in its upper position, if you had all the seats folded down like that one right there, you could slide something in over this bumper, just ignore the shipping plastic there, and it slides basically to the little bit of a bump there, and you can slide it right through to the uh, passenger seat or driver's seat, whatever you want. Now, what you can do with this floor is if you have a smelly gym bag or something, throw it underneath the floor. You've got lots of space there, probably six inches, eight inches or more. Um, I should measure that. I have a, uh, I have a tape measure in the other room. Uh, anyways, you can see that you have a lot of space there between there and the spare tire, and you do have a spare tire. Now, you can see what I just did. I very easily dropped that floor down. My wife likes to keep these dropped down low, and you can see that what that does is allows you to have a lot of uh, more depth there, and she likes it because um, nothing falls out of the back if we're ever parked on an angle, and uh, it gives you a lot more depth. So, again, if you have it up, you've got underfloor storage for things like gym bags, gym shoes, especially if you have smelly stuff. Hides it underneath there, you don't smell it in the car. Uh, however, if you want to have extra storage that way. And again, the catch you get is this, that big step up. Hey Peter, question on the wiper blades on these two models. Do either, oops, let me just go back to the screen here. Sorry, I just missed it. Let me see if I can get it back, whoops. All right, let me see if I can get it. Uh, wiper blades in these two models, do either have the arrow blades that allow you to just replace the small strip of rubber for a cheaper cost rather than the entire blade? Uh, so some of these cars do have those arrow blades. I don't believe either of these ones do. Um, you can always replace them once and then have to do that. Uh, speaking of wiper blades, just because I'm going to throw in a little pitch here, uh, these ones have just the regular, I mean, you probably could replace just, yeah, but no, you're replacing the whole thing. Um, wiper blades are free right now. If you book your winter tire swap, I believe that's the whole thing. Just double check with our service department. Um, how tall is the sole? Great question. We'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, so anyways, trunk space, that's kind of what you're looking at. You can drop the floor, you can raise the floor. If you raise it, it's lower with the back. And uh, arrow blades are just a little bit different blades. You can replace just the, um, uh, they are a little tiny bit more aerodynamic, but you can replace just the rubber on the bottom as opposed to the whole blade. So um, there is a little bit of a cost savings. I will say, uh, if you're looking at wiper blades though, our um, wiper blades here at the store, we charge a very fair price here. I know they can be very expensive at things like Canadian Tire or other uh, Walmart, other places. So just something to keep in mind, if you're ever replacing your wiper blades, uh, we are really, really competitive, like way lower price here So um, than a lot of places I've seen. Just something to keep in mind. All right, we're going to jump over here and take your questions because I know I missed a few of them. I saw you guys talking about EVs at one point, so we will jump into EVs. I like talking about them. I have a sole EV. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's just quickly see if I missed anything here. Uh, if I missed it, you can feel free to ask again. Da, 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 da. Okay, you guys are talking about electric and pollution. We can deal with that later. I'm comfortable with that. Combustion engines, Trump electric. I disagree. We'll talk about why. Um, imagine somebody stealing your car. You can find the push to start button because it's not at the usual spot. Yeah, exactly. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, if there's any questions I missed, feel free to ask them, guys. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you headroom now. One thing I was going to show you is just uh, headroom in the front seat because you guys were talking about uh, passenger height. So one of the reasons you buy an SUV and an all-wheel drive SUV like the Seltos is to sit a little higher. Amazing thing with the Kia Soul is already in these cars you sit higher. So a lot of cars, you sit here, your leg goes like that, and it comes down like that from the knee. On a Soul, you sit, you go like that, and your leg comes more down. You're sitting more like a chair, like a kitchen chair. So um, you're about six feet tall. Perfect. I'm about six feet tall. We're going to show you exactly how I fit. But the ride height in this, where you sit, where you where your rear end sits, is taller in these cars. So, uh, yeah, I'm six feet exact. Yeah, I'm right around six feet. So uh, let's just show you what I'm talking about with here. So the seats, 
sit high off the floor so you're a little bit more square like that. And that does a couple things. If you're shorter, you sit taller. If you're taller, you don't have to push the seat back as far. So let me just put you on here. So because I'm taller and my legs, my from my knees down, they're going down instead of out, that means I don't have to move the seat as far back because I'm only bending my knee out a little bit to touch the pedals as opposed to having my whole leg uh, stretched out. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, a big benefit to the sole is you can create a lot of extra rear seat space even if you're tall. Now, let's put the seat all the way down to the bottom, way down here. So I'm about six feet tall. Um, like space to the roof is a lot, like a whole lot. So again, if I'm really tall, like let's say I'm six foot six, I'm still going to be underneath here. I've seen six foot six people sit in these cars and they fit. Now let's bring the seat right up. I'm just pumping it up. It's just got a simple pump and you can see how much I'm going to close the gap there. So if you are a shorter person or you want to have a higher ride height, I'm still going up. There's a ton of adjustment in this car. Still going up. Still going up. How family friendly is a soul? My family thinks it's amazing. So I'm now on the ceiling. So remember how much space I had before? I have this much space between me and the glass. I'm on the ceiling here. So as a six footer, I've got a ton of space, but if I'm a shorter person, I can bring the seat right up and I'm really looking over the dash here. Let me just see if I give you an accurate perspective. Sometimes cameras can't do this, but I'm looking out there. I can easily see the, all four corners of the car, the front, and I'm looking down at the dash. Like that's how high I am up. Instead of looking into the dash through the steering wheel, um, you can really adjust the sole for height. And if you want to sit taller, you already do in the sole, but if you want to sit taller still, uh, you can really get uh, adjustable seating and of course you can also get the um yeah five for yourself that's perfect <laughs> and if you share this car with somebody else it also was an excellent car to share because it doesn't matter what size they are they're gonna fit and you also have tilt and telescopic steering wheels so let's do this again put it over here because nobody wants to look at me we all want to look at the car all right so over here i got the steering wheel down so you can see in and out and up and down it doesn't look like that much on video but it really does make a difference like i'm this is quite close for me um that's arm stretched straight out and you can see my arm is at my hip, you know, or at my hip, it's another couple inches forward. So again, it's just one of those things that's hard to film, but it really makes it a big difference in comfort. So uh, height adjustment there is pretty good. Let's jump in the back seat while we're here. Let's just get the seat to where I would need it. Put it forward, there we go. Yeah, I'm comfortable there. All right. Oh, I left the little lever down on the steering wheel. That hit me in the knee. Do you know you have funny bones in your knees? Apparently you do. <laughs> That kind of hurt. All right, let me just jump in here. Okay, same thing with the rear seat. Uh, very high and square, so you have a lot more space. Uh, can it fit child seats across? Yes. Uh, my soul has two child seats here. Uh, I think somebody's always asked me if you could you fit three uh, child seats. So yeah, you can fit um, if you get the right seats. Uh, if, depending on the like, some of those seats are really big in the middle. But I've seen three child seats across in a soul, so something to keep in mind. All right. Somebody said I'm married. I don't know what that means or where we're headed with that conversation. So I'm going to have to read that later. All right. Yes. Three child seats, you sh depending on the child seats. So uh, what I would suggest is bring the three child seats you're thinking of. I have seen three child seats across. Uh, you just have to vary it a little bit. Um, some of them are wider and smaller and that kind of thing. But the center seat here, I don't know if you can see. I don't know if there's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's good width to the center seat here. It's not a full-size car. There are bigger and wider cars, but it's pretty good for what it is, and it's very square. Um, so anyways, let's talk headroom while I'm here. Again, about six feet tall, like just tons of room back here. You can fit tall friends in here. What are the safety features in the sole? We'll talk about them too. Um, let's take a look here. Tons of knee room. So that's me sitting behind a six-footer. And again, um, you can lower the seat, raise the seat, move the seat without having to put it as far back as some of the sedans. So we'll look at that. While I'm back here, let's take a quick look at what we've got. Um, same type of door panels there, smaller version of the front speakers out there, or I don't know if those are speakers or not. Those aren't speakers. Those are speakers down there. Anyways, and you got a 12 volt port back here as well. Uh, if you are taking kids back here, you can put a pocket with stuff for them on the passenger side only. This is a leather type thing, which means it wipes down. This is plastic, which means it wipes down. Uh, unknown is a soon to be married man too. Unknown is actually from Korea. So... He's tuning in from Korea every day. Soon to be married, but he's staying up late, probably in the middle of the night to see us. So good for you. Congratulations. All right. Let me just jump to your questions. We're at 30-minute mark, and then we'll go off topic if we need to. Uh, somebody asked me about safety features. We'll talk about that. Uh, da, 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 da. It's creepy. What's creepy? Okay. What kind of buyers do you see for the Souls and Seltos? So buyers for the Souls and Seltos really vary. Uh, feels like an allergic car inside when it's driving? Absolutely. Uh, is there much difference between the ground clearance? Okay, so ground clearance of the Seltos 
is um, higher than this. Soul versus Celtos, I'm not sure about that ground clearance. So um, you guys can probably Google that quicker than I can remember it. Um, but I think uh, Celtos is definitely more than the Soul. I don't know between the Sportage and the Celtos for ground clearance. Okay, uh, somebody asked about safety features. We'll get to that in a couple seconds here. Buyers for the Soul and the Celtos. Really a cross-section. So the Soul, when it first came out, it was this boxy-style car designed to be funky and appeal to young people. Uh, but the problem was it sat really comfortably. It was small and easy to drive. It felt like a bigger car, but it was small and easy to park. Uh, so older people started buying it a lot. And that means everybody was buying it, young people, old people. And we still find that. We do find some people find the Soul look polarizing. Uh, some people like it. Some people really don't. My mom used to hate the Kia Soul, but she's kind of grown on to my Kia Soul. This new 2020 bottle design looks pretty cool. Uh, water bottle holders. Yep, yeah, we'll look at that. I think there are in all four doors. Uh, certainly in the front two, there are. Uh, but anyways, the design of the Soul for some people has been polarizing. The Celtos, probably a little less polarizing design. Um, but again, same thing. Works great with young families. Works great with older people, retired couples. Um, they're small enough that you don't think of them as maybe family vehicles. Uh, however, they can fit for all of them. Celtos and Soul can fit for adults. And what that means is if you do, let's say, 0% for 84 months, if you're doing a six, seven, eight year, six or seven year finance on this car, you're going to keep it when your kid's seven years old and then he's 14 and he doesn't fit anymore. Whereas in the Soul, you know, you're going to fit your full size kids. You're going to fit your parents and grandparents. You can stick elderly people who have mobility issues in the backs of these cars and not have an issue with that. So um, that's something to keep in mind. And that's probably why they work well for everybody. Uh, they are, I would say they skew a little younger, um, in these brighter colors, but, um, it just, it depends. I mean, the soul is one of those cars that sells to everybody. The Optima definitely skewed older when we were selling Optimas. I think the K5 will skew younger. Um, Sorento really popular with families. Sedona of course is a minivan. So this one really is one of those cars that covers everywhere. Uh, Forte is probably a little younger overall, uh, where we get the same buyers as Fortes into these, but then we also see a lot more older people into these because they do sit taller than something like the Forte. Uh, which makes it, a lot of people just like sitting a little taller. It makes it easier to get in and out of. It uh, depends on what you want. So uh, there we go. Somebody asked about bottle holders and somebody asked about safety. So we'll go over safety real quick. We'll go over bottle holders. Yes, front two doors, bottle holders that are actually well-designed here. It's hard to see in this picture, but hopefully you can see. The bottle fits right there. I did a big trip yesterday, had bottles in there. And then, of course, you've still got the space there. Uh, this side here, the rear door, yes, single bottle holders there as well. So that's what I thought. You can see they're actually labeled as bottle holders. So... Gas mileage and U.S. measurements, I don't know. You'll have to check Kia.com for that. Kia.ca, we have uh, gas mileage here. And honestly, I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, I recommend driving the Soul with a test drive. Yeah, so here's the thing. Forget if you like the Soul or don't like the Soul style-wise. If you think some of these features make sense, just add it to a test drive list. If you're going to go drive uh, a Toyota Corolla, we have an old Corolla out there. I just sat in it today. Um, it re I just was surprised at how boring and simple it was. Uh, these new cars are pretty advanced, pretty cool, but they're still simple and easy to use. Um, but if you're driving anything that kind of fits small crossover, small uh, car, whatever it is, just drive the Soul, just as perspective. So you know what's out there in that same price range. Uh, we sell a ton of Souls to people who weren't looking at the Soul originally, and it just becomes the perfect car for them. So that's something to keep in mind with the Soul. Really, really, really good car that way. Safety features, one of the big things is, let's take a look at this right here. Camera out front. I don't know if you can sort of see that there. Dirty windshield. Sorry about that. That camera helps you find um, the lane markers. And when it, when it finds lane markers, it's capable of keeping the car centered in the lane markers. That's called lane keeping assist. Uh, so it sees that. It also sees the, um, uh, it also um, can see cars in front of you and use that to stop on its own. So it is capable of stopping uh, if it sees a car in front of you. So that's a big safety feature. Lane keep keeps you in your lane. So when you're distracted by the big screen, you end up staying in your lane. It's got blind spot detection in here. Blind spot detection is, of course, these little, uh, I don't know if you can see them in the mirrors there. There we go, right over here. Uh, the little lights in the mirrors that warn you if someone's in your blind spot. They also have a radar, or part of that system has a radar right here. So as this car is backing up, if you can't see me because you're parked behind a minivan, let's say my hand is a minivan, driver can't see me at all, but the back of the car can see me. As soon as the car is backing up, it can warn you, hey, something's coming. Driver gets notification on the big screen, and that's another safety feature. So safety features go lower in the Soul and the Celtos. Um, you know, not to mention navigation, other stuff. You're not going to get lost. Those are helpful as well. All right, we're 35 minutes in. Let's see if there's anything I'm missing here. Dad has a Tundra and it's not boring. No, Tundras are cool. I'm cool with pickup trucks. I own one. All right, there's a, a lot of Souls here in Brantford. Yeah, there are. Um, 
we sell a lot of souls in this town. Okay. Uh, I think we've covered most of it. First, didn't like the soul, but now I do. We hear that a lot. Uh, I wasn't super crazy about the soul. I mean, I always kind of thought it was intriguing, uh, but it's grown a little tiny bit from the very first generation. And like I said, soul is absolutely the best car I've ever owned. I love it. It might happen to be electric. I got the Seltos EX, and that thing is awesome. Yeah, Seltos and Soul are two cars that um, almost, I wouldn't say more than anything, but those two cars, people buy the Seltos and the Soul and absolutely love them. So uh, just something to keep in mind uh, when we talk about uh, ownership experience and that kind of thing. Um, and really good. Like, I didn't even talk about LED headlights on these two. Uh, so you're talking, like, you know, high-end luxury car headlights on these sharp cutoff white lights. And the white fog lights as well. Signal lights are LED. Cool lighting out back. We can show them some other videos. There's other videos I've done. We're 35 minutes in. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Uh, 20 of you are on. 15 of you have hit like. I really appreciate that. It's a good ratio. If there's a few that have a like yet to give, feel free to do that. Really quickly, um, in the next little while, we've kind of hit a bit of a dull spot here potentially of you know hitting old inventory. For instance, these are our last two 2020s uh, Kia Souls. We have a whole bunch of new stuff coming in, new interesting stuff. So I'm hoping to earn your subscription. If you're interested in the K5, that's going to be our new sedan. It looks really interesting. Most of them are going to be all-wheel drive. It's just a different uh, type of car for us. Uh, we're really excited about that car. That car is coming this month. We're going to do more videos on that than just about anybody. So if we can earn your subscription about that car, if you want to know more about that, we're going to do that. Uh, Sorento is coming up. I've studied that car a lot. It's coming, or that SUV a lot. It's coming out soon. Another reason to subscribe. We're already planning for what will be a virtual auto show. Whether Kia Canada does uh, stuff that we think they should do or not, I'm going to do stuff here that I think you'll uh, will be on par with the manufacturers as far as uh, uh, when we hit February this year. So we've got some pretty exciting stuff planned in the next little while. Uh, so don't be uh, turned off if you sort of think we're doing the same type of stuff right now. We have been doing the same type of stuff, but we've got a whole bunch of stuff planned between October and February, um, which I'm going to think I think will be fun. No Stinger, uh, yeah, no Kia Stinger. We do have a Kia Stinger, but it's on it's on route to here. So when the 2021 Stinger shows up, it will be here. I'll throw it in the bay. We'll do some more videos with it. Uh, you're going to see more film stuff from me in the future as well, which is a little bit shorter, easier to digest for some of our people. Imagine a panoramic sunroof on this. That would be cool. Uh, they don't do panoramic sunroofs anymore. I don't know why. Probably just uh, fuel efficiency, lightweight. That's what they're telling us. Um, anyways, so we have a lot of stuff coming up. So if I can earn your subscription and earn your likes, that'd be great. Uh, we have a lot coming. So yeah, Stinger will be fun. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. We will uh, talk to you again tomorrow on Friday. If you have suggestions for tomorrow, let me know in the comments uh, after this video is done. Or you can reach me on Instagram at Peter underscore Brantford underscore Kia. Um, on Instagram is a great way to reach me. So wonder how much weight a sunroof adds to a car. Quite a bit, actually. A lot of glass compared to steel is heavier. I know that sounds strange. And there's also a lot of mechanical stuff to move them around. So that's part of why they uh, don't do the panoramics. But we have them in other cars. They're coming in other cars. We'll talk about that later. All right. See you, everybody, tomorrow. We got to go.